Dyson Logistics have been on board with Shark Cars since day one, and because of that and their excellent service, we are proud to be associated with them. Dyson Logistics provides tailored logistical solutions to meet your individual client needs and is set apart by its personalized service. Dyson is a strong worldwide agent network, enabling highly competitive rates, and I should also point out their head honcho is a lifelong season ticket holder of the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. Find them online, www.dysonlogistics.com, or call them on 02 8339 Dyson Logistics, service delivered. Hey there, welcome to Sharkcast Pod, a podcast dedicated to the greatest sporting club in the history of the world, the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. This short, sharp review of the round two 2023 game at Parramatta is brought to you by Dyson Logistics, the Royal Motor Yacht Club in Port Hacking, and Jason Hawes at Crips and Crips Real Estate. End-to-end, heart-stopping, heart-starting, exciting rugby league. Sharkies hold out a fast-finishing Parramatta, 30 points to 26. Our first win for the year, and a very exciting one at that. Uh, It wasn't without some negativity, but the team needs to be commended first and foremost for getting back into the game and also for holding out and winning the game. Pretty exciting stuff. I hope they don't make it that hard on themselves in the future, but a great win against a pretty good Parramatta team. Sharks were down early. In the sixth minute, Regan Campbell-Gillard scored a try down the middle, uh, going through two of our props from a Hopgood try-assist offload. Para are up 6-0 early. The offloads, particularly from Hopgood, were really impressive. And they had more than double our offloads throughout the game. The next set, unfortunately, from an offload, Sevo scores a long-range try down our right side. Eels are up 10-0 after nine minutes. We then make some errors. And then the 15th minute, Trindle to Nicara, 6-0 after a Trindle conversion. Nice little run from Britain and a great pass from Trindle. In the 18th minute, Trindle puts up a great bomb and Simonton has an error. And in the 19th minute, Will Kennedy scores the first of three tries. Close range, Sharks are up 12 points to 10 all of a sudden. That's the 19th minute, so two quick tries in five minutes for the Sharks. We're starting to win the middle and in the 23rd minute, Dale makes an error in attack. Uh, McInnes comes on, a few more errors. Errors creep into our game, including a McInnes crash play, which is going to be, I think, a weekly effort. McInnes has got to score a try at some point. So 32nd minute, Will Kennedy proves that he's human and drops a very difficult bomb to catch. Moses then scores a try down our right edge through Jesse Ramian. Eels are up 14-12. 37th minute, Matt Moylan with a terrific line break down the left. Will Kennedy backing up. And the Sharks go to the break 18 points to 14. So it's a great comeback already. However, like the first half, they came out in the second half and they were not very energetic. In the first set, Parramatta goes 98 metres through offloads. They then get a whole bunch of restarts. And then Sione cannot contain Sivo. Sivo just destroys him. I would like to think if they could do this over again that Jesse Ramian would be a little bit more urgent with his cover defence. Sione did the best he could on Sivo. He needed some help and Jesse was just a bit too late in cover. Moses gets the goal. They're up 20 points to 18. Parramatta Reels. Around the 50-55 minute mark, the Sharks are just getting bombarded in their own 20, giving away restarts and errors and the Eels have so much possession in a space of sort of five minutes But the Sharks hang on, and it's quite impressive. The Sharks hang on, and then the 58th minute, Ronaldo catches an intercept. He runs quite a long way, and then he's caught by Moses in a great cover tackle by Moses. Everyone stays calm. Siffer gets the ball, does beautifully to draw a man in, 
And then Will Kennedy beats two or three players again. Quite calm and scoring. Sharks lead 24-20. to 20. 62nd minute. Moylan with a, with a grenade, as we call it in the business. A, a kick that's between a chip and a bomb. Crossfield and Ronaldo high above everyone else scores at what is going to be one of his trademark tries. When I say that, I mean that's going to be his trademark. The leaping bomb. The leaping catch. Trindle then gets the kick from the sideline. 65th minute, Jesse makes an error on our own 40 meter line. Just a bit of a, a clumsy spell. It was hot out there, sweating the ball, but no excuses. There was nothing in it, and he dropped the ball. 68th minute, Trindle in, in attack, heading towards try time, throws an intercept. However, then Brown from the Eels kicks the ball dead for a seven tackle set for the Sharks. Then we start playing touch football, and we're leading by 10, and it leads to errors and it led to me getting quite annoyed. In the 74th minute, Moses scores a try down the middle of the field through some offloads and some handiwork by Parramatta forwards. Gets the goal. It's 30-26, to 26, Sharks leading with six minutes to go. Eels are throwing everything at us. They then give away a penalty via obstruction. 76th minute, they're attacking down our left side, and... Talakai shows some real resilience and patience and puts his man down. 78th minute, the Eels on the attack again. They force a drop out with a minute to go. They turn the ball over, and all that Jesse Ramey needs to do is, so to speak, die with the football. He runs a long way and then keeps the ball alive. So that leads to a Katoa error, but it's all on Jesse Ramey. And and they have nine seconds left with a scrum on the 50-meter line to win the game. They don't. The Sharks win at 30 points to 26. So just looking at the stats of the game, they are live stats, which will change a little bit in the forthcoming hours and days. We finished with 72% completions, similar to Parramatta, about 28 from 39. Line breaks were pretty even. They had nine offloads to our four. Run meters, pretty similar. Post-contact meters, pretty similar. We missed 23 tackles, but that's half of what we missed in the first round against South, so that's a great improvement. Penalties were four all. We had more kick meters, and we gave away three restarts to their one. Moving on to some individual players, and we will talk more about this during our weekly show, of course. But Will Kennedy, uh, very close to man of the match, if not the man of the match, with three tries. Five tackle busts, 150 meters, three line breaks. Just the one error, but that bomb was super high and swirling around and there's no excuses but you know what if that's his only error from the game and that's fantastic he's had two lights out games in two weeks and no one should be questioning him right now Sione Katara I thought was really solid and I love the way this guy plays he's all heart and he's become a lot more intelligent as a player over the years he's grown he's matured I really like where he's at at the moment Katoa. Jesse Ramian I mean his stats read okay but I thought he had a pretty unhappy game It wasn't disastrous by any means, but he was the one that stood out to me as being quite poor. I'm sure a lot can be improved on that. Having said that, he ran for 120 meters, busted three tackles. Did look dangerous in his own way, positively, but also negatively from time to time as well. Sifatalakai had a nice return to form. I thought he played really smart football, really safe in defense, and made some really great meters, some really timely runs, getting us out of our own end. And I thought that the argument for him to play in centre, he might have won the argument this week. He was he was good. Mulatalo playing with some injury in, in the uh, in the second half, I think it might have been. Fantastic game. Fantastic game from Ronnie. He was started out a little bit quiet, but he scored a try, made 150 metres. Really liked the way he played today. Speaking of returning to form, Matt Moylan was great. Two try assists and some nice kicks from him, which I know they look a little bit awkward, but his kicking was pretty good tonight. So well done to Matty Moylan. And Trindle was again outstanding really solid safe great kicking and two tries so trindle's doing everything that can be asked of him and the signing of him for two more years is absolutely outstanding by the sharks well done congratulations that's great great foresight to lock him up for two more years if this is what he's going to give us as a backup then that's outstanding on to the forwards who i was critical of last week and towards the end of last year but tonight, against the Eels, big pack, I thought they did all right. I think there's still a lot of room to improve. The middle is still a little bit leaky. 
but I actually thought that our forwards did a good job. I thought Toby Rudolph was great. He ran for 110 metres, made 26 tackles, and had a really good attitude out there, and I, I was really impressed with Toby tonight, so well done to him. Blake was great. He kicked the ball in the first set, and he ran a little bit more out of dummy half. We need more of it, but I thought Blake was... Did I say great? Maybe he wasn't great, but he was pretty good. Blake was pretty good tonight. Hamlin Wele was solid, uh, 19 tackles, 80 metres, and averaging close to 10 a, a run. I think he's warming up. I want to see him loosen up a little bit, but uh, but he was solid. Uh, Britton Nickera, I think that's how we're pronouncing it now. Apologies if we're not. I will get the pronunciations at some point. Scored a try, ran for 100 metres, made 37 tackles, didn't miss one. And again, a great re-signing based on what we've seen in the first two weeks. Great game from Britton. T. Wilton was a lot more solid this week than he was last week. 100 metres, 33 tackles, and really physical presence out there. And I hope we wrap him up. He was great. Dale Finucane, significantly more metres this week. Over 100 metres, 36 tackles. I think he spent a lot more time on the field this week, and I like it. I think that him running to the line with line engagements and trying to set up some attack, I think he needs to sort of time that a little bit better. And the same goes with his mate McInnes, who ran for 130 metres, made 28 tackles, and spent probably 45 minutes out there. Again, running to the line with line engagements, trying to be that middle roving, in inverted commas, attacking forward. They're both good at it, but I feel like they need to just keep working on that as the year goes on and they'll get to where they need to be. Um, they're both veterans. They're great players. I'm not telling them how to play rugby league. I'm just suggesting that maybe they're easing into the season as far as their attacking ability goes. Royce Hunt was strong. His stats are not amazing, but... I thought he was strong in the small window that he played and also coincided with us coming back into the game. So happy for Royce to make that comeback and hopefully there's just more time and more meters and tackles from him as the weeks go on. He's only one week back from return from injury. So, But a good job from him, first week up. Oregon Kafusi against his old team, solid. Uh, Stats-wise, kind of quiet, but a solid body out there. And again, he's going to grow into his role. Very happy he's in the team. Connor Tracy didn't get onto the field. Wasn't required. So pretty fun game. Now we've won that in hindsight. Let's talk about pretty fun game to, to experience. And I do think that we have a lot of room to improve on that. And I feel like with Nico Hines coming back into the team will force some dropouts for starters. And I feel like he'll calm the farm a little bit. For example, when we're up by 10 and there's less than 10 minutes to go and we're throwing the ball around Hail Mary style, and I don't know why. I don't know why we're not kicking to the corners and making them come out of their own end. So I think when they can master that, then the team will really cause some damage. But really solid win. Happy to get away from Parramatta with the two points and hopefully not many injuries, if any, have come out of the game. And we march on to Canberra next week, which is always a physical battle. I think we can win, but that's that's a week away, if not more. So the boys get an extra day or two to, to rest up. Short, sharp review of the Sharks. Fun game to watch, fun game to win. Back during the week with a more regular styled flagship episode. Or you can write to us, sharkcastpod at gmail.com. You can DM us on the socials, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, please do it. It's free to do and easy. You can just hit like or follow, or whatever, subscribe, whatever it is on your different app that they use. And then our episodes will just pop up when they're ready for you. Time to get out of here. Let's go. The Royal Motor Yacht Club Port Hacking is a hidden gem of the Shire, situated on the banks of the beautiful Port Hacking. It's a great place to catch up with friends, celebrate your birthday or any special occasion, and they always show the NRL live on the big screens. They also have live acoustic music on weekends. Yachty's Bistro is open seven days and nights for lunch and dinner, and they also do a phenomenal breakfast on weekends. If you mention Sharkcast, you get a free garlic bread, baby.
The RMYC Port Hacking, proud sponsors of this podcast and big supporters of the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. Check out their website, rmycph.com.au. They've got a Facebook page, or you could go old school and call them on 02 9523 So on the last, it's Hines, and he's going to go to the air again. And oh my goodness! Sharkcast is supported by the best and most honest real estate agent in the Sutherland Shire, Jason Hawes from Crips and Crips Real Estate. He's an expert in the Curringbarra region and has his eye all across the Shire. Lifelong Sharks fan and supporter of this podcast, if you're looking to buy or sell in the region, the person you need to be talking to is Jason Hawes from Crips and Crips Real Estate. Call him on 0410-417-450. That's 0410-417-450. Jason Hawes, Crips and Crips Real Estate. Sharks, sharks, forever, go out and play with our feet, now's the time to see. 